the processes are beyond our control. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, we can influence the processes, uh, sometimes locally, sometimes on a mm, wider scale, uh, partly globally, but mm, we, we have to be very well organized to, to influence the um, global processes. Anyway, uh, the best thing is to adapt. Let me shortly remind you what we were talking about yesterday. Uh, when we, when we uh, talked about the positive side of things, we mentioned uh, several phenomena. Uh, one of them uh, is the increase uh, of the general, the total amount of jobs, uh, which is uh, especially true for language combinations uh, with, uh, related to English. Uh, from English uh, into uh, different languages, mostly Russian or Ukrainian, which we work with, as well as uh, other languages uh, used in translation. Uh, the other aspects, the other positive aspects we mentioned were availability of information, uh, which is always useful both for younger translators and uh, for those uh, who are at the established stage. Uh, an exchange of opinions, uh, opinions expressed by other members of the community, by other people in the industry, can always um, help us circumvent problems, find uh, solutions, often unexpected solutions um, to our problems and uh, meet challenges. Uh, many of uh, our colleagues have their personal uh, blogs where they share all kinds of information. Uh, uh, can I, can I? Can you remember the name? No, a German translator, Les Lesner. <clears throat> no, no, uh, translator to attributions is called. Kevin Lossner. Yeah, Kevin Lossner, that's right, that's right. Uh, I find his blog very useful. Uh, he loves sharing information, he gives all kinds of views. So, uh, so just search the, the, the web uh, to find. Heaps of great advice, heaps of very useful information, uh, tons and tons of uh, tips uh, and recommendations and whatever whatever you uh, need in, in your current situation. Then uh, we mentioned the negative trends, and uh, for me uh, the session the session by Denise uh, was yeah uh, was pretty useful. Uh, because he gave us some insider information uh, about how uh, bigger companies work. Uh, I do deal mostly with PMs and uh, never, never thought about uh, the sales team. Yeah, but these tend to be uh, different uh, segments within a company. Yeah, they're the so, bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and I believe that um, understanding of, of the process, understanding of how the market works, uh, how all these uh, wheels in the mechanism, how, how, the, uh, how the gears rotate, uh, what motions are caused by what uh, drivers, this understanding will help us to find um, proper and efficient way. So, what should we do? Uh, that's a very stupid question, actually, uh, because uh, each of one, uh, each, uh, each of us, uh, each and every one of us, uh, has his or her personal aims and targets. Uh, how many of you are happy with the situation you are in? I mean, all in all, yeah, more or less a half. Yeah? Uh, what is so good about the situation you are in? Tell me. Because the ball is rolling, you know, 
business is coming and you do you see some ways of to develop further. Whether you make it or not it's a question, but whatever you have now is good enough. Yeah, so there's room for progress, okay? You mean uh, you mean existentially or professionally? <laughs> well, all in all, uh, I might say uh, about speaking about me. I might say I'm I'm quite happy with uh, with the situation I'm in now. Um, there is room for progress, but I don't know I don't know if I'm going to move to that, to that direction. Uh, the I am my own uh, master. Uh, I'm in control of myself, of my time, of my professional activity. Mm, I think uh, myself to be, and mm, which is more important, my clients regard me as an equal partner. Uh, they don't set the terms of cooperation. Uh, we agree. We always agree on the terms. Uh, it, it has to. Do, it refers both to mm, rates and deadlines. Uh, I learned to shift deadlines, and it turned to be very easy, actually. Uh, I used to agree to the deadline given by the client. Uh, then, in, in certain situations, I just couldn't make it. So I, I started, uh, telling, I started uh, telling them, well, I can do that, but with a deadline postponed by a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And it turned out that, in most cases, the clients say, oh, no problem. Or, if, they, if uh, the answer was, no, we need it, tomorrow or in five days. Okay, uh, I'm busy, but I, I, can, I can still handle it, uh, but I'll have to work over time and that'll be uh, plus 30% or, or maybe uh, plus 50% uh, to my basic rate. And then the client said, okay, we, 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 we agree to having it uh, two weeks later. Please. <laughs> so, um, we are partners, mm, no matter what they think about me, they, uh, they act uh, as if I'm a partner and that, that makes me quite, quite comfortable. So this possibility of controlling uh, my professional life and uh, as a result controlling my personal life, uh, it suits me perfectly. I can't imagine having a uh, as a, a, a job that would uh, include going to work, spending time in transport or in traffic, uh, coming back to work, and uh, most importantly, uh, being mm, tied up by a fixed uh, schedule for the rest of my life. Well, that, and you that's don't my have a boss. That's a very important thing. Yeah. Uh, that's my uh, view of the situation, and we'll talk about it later uh, during this session of uh, life beyond freelancing. Uh, so, uh, quite a number of people are happy. Uh, what? The next question is: uh, What you would like to improve? Uh, what next step you would like to achieve? And that's an important question because um, many people, though theoretically. Uh, they would be happy uh, to earn more. Uh, in fact, they don't. Mm, they're unable to do so, uh, or would feel quite uncomfortable psychologically if they were offered a possibility uh, of uh, working at a higher rate, but. Uh, with a higher level of responsibility. Uh, our mentality, uh, is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Our mentality um, uh, how can I say it? Due to our mentality, uh, we we need safety. Yeah? Uh, the higher are the rates, the higher is the responsibility and the higher are the risks. So, uh, internally, we uh, don't need the risks. We want to be safe. Uh, that's why, uh, when we compare certain situations, it's not typical, but it's quite common. Uh, when you compare certain situations, uh, or analyze uh, why certain translators cannot go further, do not progress, the answer is they don't need it or they cannot accommodate it psychologically.
they are scared by independence, uh, the freedom frightens them, uh, the need to take decisions uh, is not, um, they're not trained to make decisions, their own decisions, they feel much more comfortable when somebody uh, tells them what to do and the blame shifting is always on the boss. Uh, if uh, a person with such mentality tries to go freelance, uh, in most cases um, it, uh, they will fail, uh, mostly because uh, the feeling of blaming oneself for one's own well, for own, own mistake, one's own mistakes, uh, is hardly pleasant. I can, I can tell you from my own experience. Okay, uh, so what should we do uh, if we do want to progress professionally? I'll tell you that, that no, I told you that not everybody needs it or not everybody can accommodate uh, a higher level of income. Even that, even that is true. Uh, there are certain tricks we can use uh, uh, to um, increase our level of income, but uh, they are not universal. Uh, they are not suitable to every, every, every single uh, area of specialization, uh, and certainly not with every client. Uh, I love the approach um, promoted by Maxim. Uh, if, uh, if put in simpler terms, uh, if, if, if we define this approach, um, the translation should become a part of a product. Uh, then, as a part of a product, as a, an item of added value, uh, it, it will be um, appreciated by a client uh, and uh, the client would be quite prepared to pay a higher rate for, the, for our services. Uh, unfortunately, um, as I think, as I see it, uh, instruction manuals for uh, electronic equipment will never be a part of a product. Uh, the, the example Maxim gave uh, was quite picturesque yeah, and quite convincing. Uh, there was a conference, uh, there is a conference planned at some time, and the organizers of the conference uh, said to Maxim and his colleague, if you are, if you are unable uh, to interpret during the conference, perhaps we, we will cancel it. This is a very good example of a situation when interpretation services are a part of a product. Uh, I can hardly imagine right now on, on this spot, I can hardly imagine uh, how to make translation, not inter interpretation, but translation about our product. Like, uh, the example I gave yesterday about this consultancy company which generates support. There is a high costing service uh, which is basically a consultancy service, uh, a market research service for a company, and the result of that service is a report which is submitted by the company and uh, this report has to be translated from English into French or Spanish. And in this case, the translation is a part of the product because the report has to be uh, at, at, at its best. Because if, if, the, if the language is bad, the whole set of data and the whole amount of work which has been done for it will be really you know, devalued. So this is the, one of the cases when the translation is a part of the product because the way the final, the, because the report is the final product and then the report has to be in a certain language. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the cases where the translation really has to be good and when the guy has to, you know, to take, oh, to, to take yeah. good care about how well the is going to say. That's quite true uh, and trying to generalize it, uh, when the document which is to be translated uh, contains a lot of important information uh, 
poor translation will ruin the document. Uh, it will destroy the purpose of the document, it will uh, distort the contents of the document, and indeed the effort will be lost. Uh, in Maxim's case, uh, interpretation, his personal service uh, became a part of the product. That's an ideal situation, yeah, uh, when the client uh, doesn't need translation, uh, needs not just a translation, not just a good translation, but your personal translation. That's indeed an ideal situation. Uh, still, uh, there are quite a number of uh, cases when good translation, exact translation, targeted translation is needed. And perhaps, as a general recommendation, I believe um, we are clever enough, we are intelligent enough to identify what kind of translation job, what kind of a project it is, the, the one uh, which a client offers you. Is it a paper that will never be read or sometimes will be referred to but only in small pieces or is it a document which does contain important, useful, uh, indispensable information? In the latter case, we have all grounds for bargaining for a good price. And that's one way uh, of uh, increasing our um, income from uh, what we're doing. Next, um, having my experience uh, of about 10 years of uh, international freelance translation, uh, I can say that uh, with a number of clients it is impossible to uh, jump over the ceiling. There is uh, many companies um, have the maximum rate they are prepared to pay to the translator. Whether it, is, it depends on the, on the local market or, or on the mentality or on the knowledge uh, uh, of the supply of translators, I don't know. Uh, that's why when my rates gradually rose from point this to point this plus one to point this plus three to point this plus uh, five, uh, I lost quite a number of clients. Uh, presently I don't work with clients from Israel which were quite a number of them. I had quite a number of them uh, seven or eight years ago. Uh, I lost all of them because they didn't pay more than point something. And it is an absolute no, never. No matter how complicated the job can be. Uh, many translators, uh, even local translators, say that Italian cl clients pay low, or Spanish clients pay even lower. Well, I would add one single word to that. Most. Maybe most. Maybe of most the, or some. Yeah, some. Or, or even some those uh, that you happen to, to make contacts with, they do pay low and probably that's why they contacted you because they're seeking for, for a cheaper service, cheaper translation service. But there are other clients uh, who can afford, who do uh, pay a reasonable or even high rate. Uh, incidentally, are there many translators who translated at the rate of uh, above 0.15? I meant whether it's American sense or uh, euros. Uh, you, you, you mean uh, does their absolute minimum rate or have it as some sort of... Uh, uh, I, I, Maxim, I do know that uh, the, um, the general rate, the, the average rate we, we work uh, at is less than uh, 0.15 euros, right? For the me, average. For, for me it's about the average. Mm -hmm. Because I have quite 10 at the absolute minimum. That, that's why I ask you. Know, yeah. If you would ask uh, who has more than 0.15 at the absolute minimum, I would say uh, I do not. But uh, if, if you are talking about averages, that's roughly yeah. what they usually do. Your, it's the average uh, rate for you, uh, it's the maximum rate for you, and it's uh, well, um, something to uh, strive for, for, for others. 
Yeah? Yeah, my question is, uh, when you say uh, 0.15, do you, uh, 15 cents a word or 12 cents a word, do you mean calculated on the source text or on the target? As a rule. That makes a big difference to me. I would also ask whether it's translation only or translation and you can proofread it. Yeah. This, 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 this could be too different. If it is a turnkey product or... You, get, you can get 15... Oh, okay, for okay, okay, that's no, just no, too much really information. You can get 15 for TEP, but, uh, you know, uh, translation only is uh, the top one. Uh, does it matter? What is your personal best? Okay, that means, let's change the question. question. What is your personal best? 30. 30? 13, not 30. 13. <laughs> 30 something I would uh, Angela? Um, I have been known to get 30 cents a word. 30? Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I had to involve a proofreader because it, uh, it was a, a big, urgent, and very complicated job. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I then uh, uh, expenses really matter. Yeah, uh, mine is 27. Uh, so you see, the range is much higher than, um, than the range we usually work at. And surprisingly, uh, the 27 cents uh, I was paid were paid by a Mexican client, which is which can hardly be regarded. Mexico is can hardly be regarded as a well-paying country. I mean, a uh, country where they pay high for translators, but it happened. Well, it was a one-off job, uh, but uh, not that small, and uh, it paid uh, for my three years membership in a three or four years membership in ATA, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, the rates range is much wider than we know, when we uh, think about it. Uh, so, there is room for improvement. How to reach it? How to go up? How many of you uh, have used the accept applications uh, function at pros.com. Mm -hmm. I see surprised uh, look on your face, Alexander. <laughs> I know there is a function. When you, when you uh, search, aha, uh, I'm not signed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, uh, I'm not logged in. Uh, when you're logged in and you're a paying member, uh, when you come to this page, uh, there is a button. Uh, accept application. I think it is, it is called uh, like that. Uh, by pressing the button, you will find a list of translation agencies um, with their rating, uh, with their points uh, in the uh, what it LV, LV, LWA, right? Likelihood to work again with the rating. Ah, no need. And uh, there will be a list of about 50 or 60 translation agencies all around the world who uh, invite translators to apply as freelancers. Has anybody used it? No. 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 One, two. Uh, most people even don't know about the existence of such an option. Yeah? Where is it located? <coughs> Pardon? Where is it located? Uh, in the blue board section, I believe. So, even such uh, simple things uh, like, or not, not simple, but familiar things like pros.com have uh, much more mm, potential. Potential for improving your professional uh, development. It could be a wise idea to put this button on the main page. Uh, uh, and two days later, the list will be empty because uh, uh, these agencies who are willing uh, and invite translators to apply as freelancers, they will receive uh, a few um, thousands and uh, maybe a few dozens of thousands of applications. Yeah, some of them, uh, as far as I remember, uh, these agencies identify language combinations. Sometimes you see all language combinations, and that's not a good idea to uh, apply to them, because these are box shifters or however they are, uh, working from all languages into all languages. But pretty often, these are companies needing translators in a specific, in a specific or maybe in a few specific language combinations, that where you can uh, send your CV, uh, describe your experience, and maybe, certainly not guarantees, 
Uh, satisfaction is not guaranteed in this case. Uh, maybe uh, this will be your first or maybe your best client. Do you use this button personally? I did. I did. Not now. Not now. I'm not seeking more jobs right now. But I did, and um, two or three uh, times uh, I got new clients, which uh, helped me through a year or two in my translation career. Uh, I'm asking because I used that option, and at that time it seemed to me that uh, the average or even low pay clients. Yeah, but that should be. It. There, uh, not the right way to increase your rates, but uh, just to find something to find something new. Uh, it's just another another option which lets you bargain with people whether they go for bargain or not. Mm -hmm. but still, uh, more opportunity. Yeah, nobody is telling that these are well-paying clients, highly paying clients. Uh, but uh, I know that for uh, some of us, the problem is not to go higher, but uh, to go wider. Yeah. They don't. How many of you um, have the workload which exceeds, uh, let's say, 75% of your working time? Yeah, usually the, mostly the central, the first row and the central part. Yeah, but uh, the, it's uh, on the on the on the general. Yeah? Sometimes you have breaks, and uh, a fraction of translators are not too busy. Uh, they have uh, clients who supply them work to keep them well, to keep them busy, 50 or 60 percent of time. Well, to fill in the gap, why not? Uh, as for as for better paying clients, again from experience, my personal experience though, I can tell you that uh, these clients rarely post jobs. Um, why don't they? The answer is very simple. So they, do, yeah. What? No, are you from Odessa? Partly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the answer is very simple. They don't need translators or just translators. They need a translator uh, who fits certain criteria, uh, internal criteria developed in a company. Uh, the criteria may include experience, uh, specialization, uh, general area of specialization, and very often a specific area uh, the, the, the translator is experienced in. Uh, maybe membership, maybe credentials, maybe... Mm, I don't know, actually. Sometimes in location, when you deal with certain confidential materials, Clients often ask that the translator has to be a native speaker located in this country. Yeah, location. Uh, in some ways, yeah, in some ways this is true. Certified uh, or not. Uh, and also, native speaker of the target language, which seems to be almost um, superfluous to say. But I don't know about other markets, but the Italian market is notorious. Um, if you post a job on prose saying only native, native English speakers required, and you get 50 replies, you can be sure that 40 of those replies will be from people who spent a month in Brighton and think that they are now an English native speaker. Oh, that's for every language, I must say. It happens everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, my, that's my personal experience. So, um, because people have found that this happens, they will now uh, take the time, they spend half an hour and look at the directory rather than have to spend six hours sorting through a list of names and then getting to the end and realizing that you know the person you want isn't in there, even if they are uh, often their sales is a true sense. Mm -hmm. That's what I was driving to. Uh, these clients who need uh, who don't need just a translator, uh, but someone who is specialized and prepared, well, ready to work right now doing the translation correctly the first time uh, they take it. Uh, the client will go to the directory. <clears throat> As you see, there are quite a number of fields, including the basic ones like the source and the target language, but also 
uh, quite a number of optional fields, uh, including software, professional credential st status, um, geographical location can be important, but that's not as important as, uh, in my, not that important in my experience. But if a client knows that translation must be done with traders, uh, they will have this option uh, on, and you won't have a chance of getting a job which is quite suitable for you if you don't have uh, and don't use traders. Uh, professional credential status. Credentials, is it a diploma? Right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the F. Um... Professional credential, it's um, things like membership in the Institute of Linguists, um, American Translating Association. But I can't start with a credential. Otherwise, it would be complicated. Here's a diploma. And uh, whether it's verified or not, how does that process come to Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, at PROS, uh, credentials mean uh, having a, a diploma or um, a paper confirming your um, linguistic education, at least uh, in in terms of... Uh, well, I think if you click on the arrow, it should give you a list of possibilities. Okay. No, no, no. There or there. On the right. On the right. On the right. Just. No, hold. Yes. This one? No, it will give you reported or verified. No, no, no. I mean, what does PROS uh, mean by credentials? I think, I think it's uh, diploma. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, as a moderator, I think Rodian will confirm it. You just send the copies of your diplomas and uh, it's uh, reported. And, uh, uh, or you just say, I have a diploma in this, uh, from this university or whatsoever. And then you send uh, the copies to the staff, the email, and uh, they say, okay, okay, that's right. Then you get the status verified, that's it. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. So if you have a diploma, you can confirm your credentials with pros.com. And my story is, uh, to, con uh, to illustrate the situation, uh, after I, uh, I had my uh, credentials uh, verified, that is, I sent a copy of my diploma to the staff, uh, not Harkov staff, it was uh, before Harkov office was opened, uh, I got a few clients Mm, which give me, uh, which wanted to give me German into Russian translation, only because uh, this language combination was in my diploma. I think my profile uh, doesn't say translating from German in maybe it does, uh, but it's on the on, on, in the bottom of the list. What I assumed. Uh, the client did pay quite uh, did pay attention to credentials, and a few clients of, uh, from Germany, they started as uh, with ask, started by asking me whether I translate from German into Russian. Now I have very good relations with two of them, translating from English into Russian and Ukrainian. Um, and German clients are pretty generous, I'd say. So. Using pros.com, having your profile as complete as possible, uh, giving quite um, giving giving um, details about your professional experience, uh, being to the point, um, feeling the how do you call it? Нижней uh, части как они называются? Ключевые слова, keywords, yeah. Keywords, giving keywords, but not just translator and languages, but uh, maybe keywords from from your area of specialization, uh, will help clients find you. And as I as I mentioned before, uh, the certain categories of clients they never post jobs. They look for translators who fit specific job requirements by experience, by sometimes by credentials, as I tried to illustrate. 
uh, Denise knows what a sprinkler and drencher, uh, what, what, what the th these things are. Those who don't work with oil and gas, uh, they, I think they might, might have never heard these words. Uh, so if a client needs somebody who can trans uh, this is a translate a manual for a sprinkling and drenching system, then the keyword might do the trick. So uh, don't underestimate it. Uh, okay. A trick used by Ralph Lanster. Uh, he intended to uh, uh, come to the conference, but unfortunately had to decide against it as uh, due to family reasons. Uh, what he does is. Well, if you know, uh, he has a company, a small company, uh, dealing uh, in a single language combination, that is English and German, uh, and working with a single area of specialization, financial translators. Uh, he told us uh, about his, uh, one of his tricks. He goes to a specialized forum, conference, uh, Congress or whatever. Uh, he approaches a group of uh, bankers, usually these are bankers attending these uh, events, approaches a group of bankers smoking or drinking coffee, uh, joins, joins the group and uh, attracts uh, their attention by asking a, well, not very, but still uh, a foolish question. Uh, not a stupid, but a foolish question. Uh, a question uh, to which um, the answer to which every banker should know, like like his own name. Uh, no doubt, everybody turns to him because uh, well, 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 who are you? To, 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 why, why are you here? Why are you asking such questions? If you, if you don't know the answer, you shouldn't be here at this at this uh, forum. So, who are you? Oh, translator. Translate. What are you doing here at the conference? And then, this is a good start uh, of the discussion, uh, because the, uh, the group is interested to know what you as a translator are doing here. Uh, then you present yourself and you have three or four minutes of attention uh, with the big guys from uh, different banks of, from the world. Uh, I'm retelling his words. Yeah. So it is a free presentation of your services or your company uh, with a group of uh, big guys and the rest depends on you. How you present it, uh, if your presentation is good, you'll have uh, two or three uh, direct clients from this group of smokers or coffee, coffee drinkers uh, right now. That's one of the tricks. Uh, can anybody add something from there on? Oh. Okay, we're doing. Another good point is to differentiate uh, your profile. For example, just uh, take a look at your profile um, by the by your client size. When you open the profiles of ten or twenty translators, uh, they're just the same. Source language, target language, everything is the same. Who are you going to choose? And if you differentiate or, or in any way, uh, for example, you can add some personal touch in your resume, in your description of your business. Uh, if you remember, uh, Ralph Lamstern also added some personal info, and uh, some other guys did that. So when you read about so the translator, you just can see that it's some person behind this profile, not just a translator, general image of a translator. There's a person behind it, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a good chance for you to be chosen if you differentiate by, by your profile. Make it uh, uh, eye-catching. Add something that catches your, the eyes of your client, and uh, you'll get a chance to be chosen by this client. Yeah, uh, exactly. A very, very good point. Even during the uh, in this um, electronic uh, period, we still uh, prefer human relations, uh, personal relations. Uh, Denis uh, emphasized the importance of building up uh, personal relations with the ends. Uh, the same is true about self-marketing. Uh, be a person, not only a professional, but be a person, and you may differentiate. 
Yes, Maxim, please. Uh, I'd like to add something uh, related to Ralph's uh, trick mentioned by Alec. There is another trick, maybe an even better one, uh, that has something to do with specialization, which we have been discussing. Approach that group of bankers or whoever and ask not a foolish question, but a really sophisticated and good one. But you have to be in, you have to know their stuff. They know, ask a very good question about some latest hot technology developments in their industry. The one which raises lively discussion among them, and they would ask you about your personal opinion and a bad way, yeah, and where you are working. Well, I am not working in your sector. I am actually an interpreter and translator being here. Oh, well, and, and you asked that question, you know, that, that has something. Well, I think uh, Ralph said that uh, the main purpose of his being there, uh, he really said that the main purpose of his being there is uh, being informed about what's going on, but we yeah, have the I, method. I, I mean, the question should be really either, either a foolish one, uh, uh, Ralph's version, or, 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 or a really serious one, the one which make them uh, think you, you you probably work in that sector and you're really well aware and you should be well aware. Maxim, Maxim uh, they came to the conference to discuss serious questions during two days and uh, during the, the coffee break asking more serious questions would hardly draw too much, uh, too much attention okay, to you. But a foolish question, experience. psychologically a foolish question is very good to draw everybody's attention to oneself uh, at the beginning, of course. Okay, uh, another trick which can be used, and uh, there is a success story from one of uh, our colleagues, is to complain. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that we... A bit, a bit girlish, a bit... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what to come, the, 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 the difference is uh, in what you complain about. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh, what he did, uh, he got sick and tired of uh, finding poor translations in the area uh, he knew, uh, he knows, uh, and works in. Uh, these poor translations were. Uh, repeating themselves uh, every now and then in a certain publication. Uh, so he contacted uh, the headquarters, not the uh, local subsidiary or local office, but the headquarters telling that uh, the translation uh, they probably pay for uh, and regularly publish uh, in the Russian language uh, is not exactly very bad, but it can be much better because the terminology is not always consistent and the uh, lingu linguistic presentation is not always up, up to the standard uh, or even when up to the standard it can still be improved because the translation is quite technical and specific but with a marketing, marketing touch. Uh, he got into uh, contact, uh, he was uh, contacted back by a, per, a person responsible uh, for the uh, foreign marketing or foreign sales uh, at the headquarters and after six weeks of dialogues uh, a translation agency contacted him telling that uh, they were told by the headquarters to hire him as the primary provider of the Russian language translation and offered him uh, the rate he never earned before. That's a very uh, illustrative, I believe, uh, story. Uh, all of us, every now and then, uh, all of us come across poor translation. Usually we exchange, uh, we exchange indignation or irritation or whatever in the fora, and that's that. We don't do anything else. Perhaps the trick can be used more widely. Uh, maybe the the end mm, client, the end client, the end payer. I say because all in all, it's the end client uh, and uh, customer paying for the translation uh, and localization. Maybe if they knew that the translation is not always good, they would reconsider their policy, uh, their translation payment policy. That would work. Why not? 
Okay, okay, I, I have uh, probably exhausted my list of useful recommendations. If somebody has to add something, you're welcome. Uh, if uh, nothing comes uh, to head right now, we will have coffee and then continue with the, with the discussion. Any, any additions, questions? Uh, yes, Radion, please. The very final thing. I would suggest uh, be creative. For example, once I approached uh, the BDA, business development manager, sales guy, and said, okay, you're working with a guy from, from a large global company. Uh, let's work uh, with him together. So we approached with that uh, global uh, business development manager, the sales guy, to the person who was responsible for the translation, localization of the product into several languages. And we worked together. Uh, the guy from the sales department sold the product and uh, I uh, helped him uh, to express the idea of importance of the localization to the Russian market. So we worked together and this uh, made a good uh, result. So we uh, got that uh, contract into Russian and we uh, managed to raise the rate for the agency and finally for the translators, for the group of the translators. So just be creative to invent things, how to approach a client, to educate a client, what's working.